Hi, I'm Dr. Jen Pena, and I'm here to give you the latest scoop in the headlines in sexual and reproductive health that are dominating your group chat. This is Doom Scroll. Hi, how are you? Hey, Annie, how are you? It's great to see you. I read this great op-ed headline, People with Disabilities Deserve Comprehensive Sex Education, and I'd love to talk more about it. What exactly is the Americans with Disabilities Act, and how does it support people with disabilities? The ADA is the American with Disabilities Act, and it was a landmark civil rights law that came into play in 1990 in the United States. And really what it meant to do was you know, prohibit discrimination against individuals that have disabilities and ensure equal opportunities for them in all aspects of public life. Do you know what led up to the ADA? There weren't any protections for people with disabilities, again, across the board in terms of things like, you know, employment and job securities, mandates that protected public services for people with disabilities, you know, public accommodations at restaurants and in transportation. And there were many cases that led up to people People saying, you know, we deserve these rights. And basically that led up to this act. What do you think the most harmful misconceptions about people with disabilities are when it comes to sex, consent, or sexuality? One of the common misconceptions is that people with disabilities are asexual or they don't have sexual desire. And this is a very harmful assumption because it's not legitimizing their sexual needs and their sexual health. There's, you know, an issue with vulnerability, right? I mean, people with disabilities might be seen as people who can be taken advantage of, and that includes their body and their sexuality. There's this misconception that people with disabilities simply, you know, are not only asexual, but they're just averse to relationships in general, or that they're not able to consent and give full informed consent for sexual relationships. What do you think we mean when we say we need to expand accessibility to sex ed? By expanding that accessibility to sex ed, it means that you're going to be inclusive, that you're going to make the sex education available and tailored to those specific individuals with disabilities and the various types of disabilities, right? Because there's disabilities that are verbal or, you know, that affect hearing or that affect mobility, and they're not all the same and they shouldn't be treated that way. Some of the examples of, of ways we can do this is, you know, you build curriculums, again, that are diverse and, and tailored to the different disabilities. You can use things like what they call adaptive technologies, right? So if you have somebody who's deaf and can't listen to podcasts or a webinar, then you make it so that it's accessible for them to be able to absorb the information in a way that they can do it. Well, thank you so much for meeting with me and talking about this today. I hope that we see some serious progress. I hope we get to talk again soon. Absolutely, Annie. Thank you so much and great to see you.